Um, so my, my journey with mantra really started at um, nine years of age. It was when I received my first Bija mantra for meditation. Um, and, you know, I think it's when you are with something your entire life, it's kind of like a fish in water doesn't quite realize just the world that they're immersed in because it becomes, you know, the only reality that you know. And it wasn't until I, you know, went first into neurology and then started to study um, Ayurveda and then dove deeper into my understanding of the ways in which mantras affected biology in terms of reducing blood pressure, reducing um, neurotransmitters associated with stress, and also just helping for, you know, symptoms like depression. That I think that was the first time that I really began to realize that this was a medical um, tool. Um, and so I began to use it as a medical tool. But as I'm now going into what I feel is the next dive in here in India um, with the research and the excavation we're doing of the Siddha medicine records, it's the first time that I'm appreciating that mantra doesn't just drive biology, mantra drives reality. And so it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit overwhelming and profound in the sense that, you know, it would be like if a child one day realized that their father was Superman or their mother was Wonder Woman, that, you know, here's this thing that you had with you your whole life. And it turns out that it's, it's extraordinary beyond extraordinary. So that I guess would be kind of just a summary. I'm, I'm, um, I suppose falling in love with mantra all over again, but this time not as a child using it for stress management or as a neurologist using it as a medical tool. I'm falling in love with it both as a scientist piercing into quantum biology, but as a human being piercing into the fabric of my own reality. So that's a summary. Yeah. <laughs>